Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. This is video number 25, and I'm going to discuss the second law of thermodynamics. Before I do that, the videos previous to this are as follows. Number one, my very first video, where I discuss the meaning of heat and temperature. So you need to know what temperature and heat are in order to understand this video. Next, I did a lot of videos, but the most important of which are numbers 21 and 24 where I discussed the sharpness of the multiplicity function. What we saw is as follows. We saw that when you have two solids together, solid A and solid B, that each of those will continue sharing energy until the multiplicity function has gotten to its maximum value. And I'll speak more about that in a moment. And we saw that when we plotted the multiplicity function, we saw that going from here down to the end was an absolutely, we could, you couldn't plot it on paper if you, if you even wanted to plot your multiplicity function to be this particular size on paper. So this would be for, like, this would be thousands of kilometers on paper, or if this is only a centimeter. So the point is, the multiplicity has increased, and it's an, a ridiculously likely that it's going to be in that particular state. Anyway, so I'll speak more, more about that in a moment. Now, the point here is that this, this video is standalone, and I will explain everything and you don't actually need to have seen the, the previous videos. So, bottom line up front. The second law says the heat flows from hot to cold. Which can be said, that I'll paraphrase, that multiplicity tends to increase. Or that entropy tends to increase. Or that disorder tends to increase. Now, in my next video, I'm going to discuss entropy. So, for that reason, I'm not going to discuss the entropy or disorder here. But I put them there for completeness. Now, so really what I'm going to discuss in this video is that heat flows from hot to cold and multiplicity tends to increase. Now, if you are following my tutorial series, you, we have actually seen the second law numbers of times, but I've never called it that so far. But now I'm, now I'm going to actually discuss it. So what did we see? We saw the following. We, when we looked, we analysed ideal gases and Einstein solids. So an Einstein solid, by the way, is just a, it's a, a first... Um, approximation at the energies in solids. It's not very important. But what we saw is when, whether you have an ideal gas or you have a solid. Let's say you have two systems, A and you have system B. Okay, and before I talk about system A and system B, let's just say what temperature is. Temperature, temperature is a measure of something, it's, it's a measure of uh, your body's willingness to spontaneously give up energy. And the energy it gives up is heat. Or if it's cold, the energy that it gives up or the energy that it takes in is heat. So that's important. Temperature is the willingness or of your body to spontaneously give up heat. So a hot body, which is high temperature, will like to spontaneously give up energy and a cold body which is at cold low temperature will spontaneously receive energy so like i said let's go back we had two systems say a and b let's say they're two ideal gases or they're two solids and each of them we're going to have we'll say q sub b units of energy in b and q sub a units of energy in a and each of them has their own multiplicity uh, the multiplicity of b and the multiplicity of a all right. Now, so for those who haven't seen my videos before, what does multiplicity mean? Multiplicity, which is given the, the placeholder, I give it the placeholder omega, is the total number of states. So the, I think the, the quickest way to explain this is if you think of an atom. Let's say each of the atoms has, the, say your atom has three shells, okay? And in those three shells, this one has three subshells. Let's say this one has four, this one has three subshells, and this one has two. Well, if I'm an electron, how many different places, or how many different states are available for me? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So in this particular, uh, this particular random case, the multiplicity is nine. But you can imagine for an ideal gas with Avogadro's number of molecules, which is, uh, well, I can't even remember, 10 to 26 or something like that. Anyway, when you have billions of molecules, you can imagine that the multiplicity is going to be absolutely enormous, because it will be made bigger by the number of particles, the number of energy, 
uh, the, the amount of energy in your system, the volume and all this sort of thing. So we're talking about a massive number. But anyway, so going back to our system here, we saw that when we had Einstein solids or ideal gases, if we put them to, two systems together, that they will share energy. That's what we saw, but we, we didn't really know that yet because we said that, let's say, let's say that Q sub B is greater than Q sub A. So B is hotter than A. Well, just by knowing that B is more energy and therefore is hotter, we can say, well, as a result, it's a higher temperature and it's going to give up energy. And A is at a lower temperature, so it's going to want to spontaneously receive energy. The question is, when does this spontaneous flow of energy stop? Okay? Well, it stops, you might say, when it's in equilibrium. And we know it's in, just by our, you know, our kind of um, intuition, we'll know that it's, it'll stop when both bodies are at the same temperature. Okay? That's what equilibrium is. But when we discussed Einstein solids and ideal gases, we, we could mathematically prove this. Because we found that the total multiplicity, would we'll say, is the multiplicity of A multiplied by the multiplicity of B. And written in this form, it's, it's not very good to us. We weren't able to, uh, we weren't able to you know, see its physical properties just by looking at the formula. But I showed in previous videos that we could arrange both of those as a maximum multiplicity multiplied by some Gaussian function. G-A-U-S-S-I-A-N. So that the total multiplicity looked something like this. If I plotted the multiplicity of solid A, there's the multiplicity, and I'm just looking versus um, Q sub A, the amount of energy in A. What we found was that at the end, or, you know, at a later time, the system would look like this. Okay? It would look like this. And it would say that, let's say if we were to draw, just to say, talk about scales, if I was to draw from here to here on paper, properly I would need thousands of kilometers, but if I draw from here to here, I would only need a centimeter. But what this means here is that if the energy in A, after a while, after sharing energy with B, the energy, we'll say the energy, the, this energy here will have a zero, it is zero multiplicity, so it's pretty much, so it won't, it won't be in that state. This is zero multiplicity, zero, 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 zero multiplicity. So the system will not be in any of these states. It won't be in any of these states either, which, and there are, as I said, like billions of these states. But instead, the system is most likely going to be in these ridiculously small few states here, where the multiplicity is going to be absolutely enormous, okay? It's going to be an absolutely enormous number. So, we found, we found that the system's after setting down, settling down into its most likely macro state. But when we looked at the energy, at what energy will it be, uh, when it's in its most likely macro state, it'll be when it is exactly the total energy over 2. So this is Q sub A, and this is the total energy over 2. So the system will stop, will stop sharing energy, or be in its maximum multiplicity, when it has exactly half the energy, when there are, of course, two bodies. Or it'll be a third of the energy if there are three bodies, or a quarter of the energy if there are four bodies, or thereabout. All right? So the system will keep sharing energy, there's the energy, and it will keep sharing, sharing, sharing energy until its multiplicity is maximized. That's, that's just what it does. And the multiplicity is maximized when the, the, there is an equal amount of energy in all the, the, the bodies in your system. All right? And that's what equilibrium is. So that's what we saw when we did our, um, both our Einstein solids and our, our ideal gases. But what does that mean? Well, that means heat has flowed. We'll say, let's say that the, the multiplicity of B was greater than the multiplicity of A to start. And so was the temperature. The, the temperature or the amount of energy in B was greater than the amount of energy in A. So we saw that if the system finishes, it will say is stops or is most likely to be in a system where Q sub B is equal to Q sub A, which is equal to half the total energy, where Q total is equal to Q sub B plus Q sub A. And I know you can just about see that. Well, that makes perfect sense. That the total energy is the sum of the, the energies in A and B, and the system will, will stop when it's, in, when it's half the energy is in both. Now, what about the multiplicity? Now, I won't talk about the multiplicity of A versus the multiplicity of B, but what I will say is that the total multiplicity will have increased. And it will, it, it, well, maybe not increased, but the total multiplicity is now maximized. So, there is half the energy, the energy is shared when the multiplicity is maximized. 
So heat has flown. Now see, there is heat in B was hotter, but it's in equilibrium when B is equal to A. So B is after getting colder and A is after getting hotter. So heat has flowed from B to A, or heat has flowed from the hot body to the cold body. That's what, and that we call the second law, heat flowing from hot to cold. Simple. But we can say, we've, we've mathematically seen that heat flowing from hot to cold happens because the multiplicity has increased. So the multiplicity of our bodies, or, or our system, tends to increase. And the physical result of that is that heat has flowed from hot to cold. So really what we're saying is that the second law of thermodynamics isn't a real physical law. It's more of a statement of probabilities. It's, this, it's ridiculously, ridiculously likely that the system will settle in its most likely macro state. The most likely macro state is the one where the energy is shared equally between all your bodies. And that's when the multiplicity is maximized. And in order for the multiplicity to be macro maximized, the heat has to flow from, you, from the hot body to the cold. So then you might ask yourself, just as, as an aside, well, what's stopping heat flowing from cold to hot? Why can't we have heat flowing from cold to hot? You know, you, people will say immediately to you, well, that will violate the second law of thermodynamics. Now, we've just said that the second law of thermodynamics isn't a physical law, it's more of a statement of probabilities. So is it impossible from heat to co go from cold to hot? Is it impossible? I don't know that I can really answer that question, but I will say that the probability of heat going from cold to hot is virtually zero. Okay? But heat flowing from hot to cold is virtually the maximum. It's, it, the probability is virtually one. Alright? So, just, just to say it once more, okay, I'm probably laboring the point. The multiplicity, if you were to draw it from here, we'll say this is the, 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 uh, you know, at the end of my Gaussian, even into the center to draw it on paper it would take thousands of kilometers. Just to draw a Gaussian which is on paper, let's say, a centimeter. Okay? But the system will be in this, the system is most likely to be in this particular, um, uh, in, in this particular state. And we found that, that particular state is half the total of energy. And if we plotted Q sub A, it'll be that way. Or if we plot Q sub B, it'll be that way as well. Alright, so for that reason, heat isn't going to flow from cold to hot, because let's say, if we're to look at, the, let's say there is the energy in A, well where is hot? Well this is hot, and this is cold. Okay, so it's, the probability of the system being colder is, is, very, is, is, is zero, the probability of the system being hotter is zero. And I, I'm sure you can hear a bit of a, a, a vehicle moving out the back there. Alright. So I'm going to finish up. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and if you're in a good mood, you might also click on an ad. Thank you.